there's a long history in the annals of literature and uh, entertainment of bad guys who are wonderfully attractive in various ways. If you think that Spider-Man is the geek gone good, Octavius is the geek gone bad. Dark Ark is fantastic, but but what do you do with Dark Ark? How do you how do you develop this character? In the casting of Alfred Molina, you start with someone who's immensely likable. And and that's what you want in any great villain is you want him to be a human being who has dreams and desires and and flaws and he gets carried away in the service of something that he thinks is positive. Like, you know, it it is ultimately his own hubris. The real crime would be not to finish what we started. We'll do it here. The power of the sun in the palm of my hand. Nothing will stand in our way. Nothing! Please welcome our very own Dr. Octavius, Alfred Molina. My familiarity with, with the with the Doc Ock character really wasn't very uh, thorough because I mean, when I was a kid, I was very you know fond of uh, comics and particularly the Marvel comics. I was always a big fan of Marvel comic characters, much more so than the DC characters because even at that young age, they seemed to me to be much more interesting. When I when I got the job, I I started checking out some back cup copies and you know uh, realized that in fact um, Doc Ock changed his look very much over the years as, as you know, depending on who was drawing him but the one thing that was very very constant in the characterization of Doc Ock all the way through the various stories from the mid 60s right through to now was that he always had a really kind of good sense of humor there was always something a bit more a bit kind of sharp and intelligent about him he wasn't just a a kind of brutal bad guy so sort of like you know he, he wasn't just you know, he, he kind of had a he had a bit of class to them, you know. I used to like, I like that. I suppose one anxiety I may have had at the beginning was how much of this was going to be an actor's job and how much of it was going to be essentially just, was I just going to be a cog in a much, much bigger machine. But as, I, as we started work, I realized, of course, that Sam never loses sight of the human elements in in the job. I mean, he, he's not one of those directors that suddenly gets completely obsessed with the technical stuff and the special effects and the CG and all that stuff, and then completely forgets about the flesh and blood that's that's in there. Dark Ark to make him the way we are making him for this movie is a very complicated process. Uh, it's probably one of the more challenging characters. The original drawing of, of Paul Catlings is the one that everyone gravitated to in terms of style and feel. And actually, I think the end ended up not exactly that, but there were a lot of things that were similar to that drawing. There was a decision right at the beginning that the actor and the director wanted practical puppets to work with so that when they were intimate, if the tentacle was picking up a cigar and putting it in Doc Ock's mouth and then lighting it with a match, they could do that with puppets in close with the puppeteers off screen so that one, the actor had uh, the tentacles to interact with, to perform with. There's various stages. There's the corset, which has to be worn basically for protection. Then on top of that goes what we call the girdle, uh, which is what the tentacles are attached to. And that girdle is in two parts. There's the back girdle and the front girdle. We've got the big metal version, we've got, we've got a rubberized version. Then we've got other things like there's the big spine, this kind of spine. The tentacles, uh, when all four of them are on, the whole thing weighs about 100 pounds. In peak performance, with all four tentacles going simultaneously, there were 16 puppeteers working. Each puppeteer had a very specific job. Each tentacle takes four people to operate. The performance 
relationship between what our team of puppeteers did in relation to what Alfred did on set in terms of his movements being uh, led by our movements or our movements being led by his movements started off in a very slow and careful rehearsal environment of pacing it out. What does it feel like to make this eight foot long arm strike from your back and look like it's coordinated from your own muscles? Uh, so that it started off almost as a movement exercise trying to to marry the movements of all the people involved in making that tentacle strike. We realized of course that this was a, a crucial and integral part of the characterization and we had lots of long and, and detailed rehearsals with the puppetry team. Anytime you ever feel, I mean, they're so <laughs> totally safe to touch it or, or play with it. Cool. That's cool. Go. Three, two, one, strike. Cool. Ready and go. And on go, we're going to look to the right. Ready and go. How's that feel, Fred? And yeah, a lot better. And go. A lot better. Okay, cool. One, two, three, right there. Four, five, right there. Five. Okay, yeah, those so last right couple. Around. Exactly. So last couple of steps, it's like it's, it's like I'm it's like I'm being held back. Okay. We tried to make the technicals practical whenever we could, um, because clearly that was always the mo the most effective way of doing it. When they're real, they're real. There's no two ways about it. But you know, there are certain shots that you know obviously that can't be done, and so we had to have them you know CG'd in at a later date, and I, and I had to kind of like mind them in a way, I imagine they were there. One of the things that's tough about the character, Doc Ock, is to make him perambulate. Walking on his own feet is one thing, and he has to act as though he's carrying 60 pounds of tentacles. When he's wearing the puppets, he is carrying 60 pounds of tentacles, so that's not too tough. When we take the tentacles away, the practical ones, and we start making virtual tentacles, his weight is supported by those tentacles. He's carried by those tentacles. So we've made a device that actually harnesses to him and moves him through space as if the tentacles were supporting him. And that's the Doc Ock walk rig. Doc Ock walk rig. There's bound to be a toy in that someplace. It's on a track and it flew uh, like 20 feet above him and all these wires hooked to him and, we, and through a computer, we were able to pull the wires in different different ways. And it was just like, it was like a computerized, um, we, were the, we were the puppet masters. Peter Parker. And the girlfriend. Apart from it being a bit tedious and sometimes difficult, I quite enjoyed that the technicalities of it. I quite enjoyed the technical problems that had to be solved. I, I enjoyed being part of that process. You know, it's a funny thing. Most comic book movies kill off the villains. In the comic books, I rarely, if ever, did that. I was more miserly. I didn't want to get rid of a good villain. I wanted to save him and use him again. Readers and audiences build up a feeling for, for the characters, if they're interested, heroes or villains, and it's always fun to see them again.